This video is sponsored by Skillshare. This design is built around the Mark Audio CHR70 4-inch full range driver. It has a magnesium alloy cone and impressive operating frequency range of 40 Hz to 25,000 Hz. The efficiency is 85.5 decibels at 8 ohms, which make it easy to use with small to medium size amplifiers, say 20 to 50 watts of power delivery. The driver basket is an injection molded self dampening polymer. Uh, it's a high quality driver at a reasonable affordable price as well, um, around 36 US dollars at the time of this video. The amazing thing about most Mark Audio full range drivers is the fact that you don't need to include any correction circuit components in the signal path. This does not mean that you can't, but the full range purist amongst us will certainly agree. The frequency response of these drivers are suitably flat enough, even in a well-designed enclosure to provide a very good flat response that varies plus minus 2.5 decibels over almost the entire usable frequency range. Oh, and did I mention, besides the copper or champagne color or cone, you can also get it in black or silver. So while I'm assembling the enclosures, let's talk a bit more about the speakers I'm building. There are many potential iterations of suitable enclosures that can be designed for this driver, from transmission lines, tapered quarter wave tubes and bass reflex or ported enclosures. But for this design I want to keep it simple and something that can be used as a bookshelf speaker on speaker stands or on a desktop as a full range monitor. The desktop version will be powered but more on how I will do that later. This full range driver can only handle about 20 watts of nominal power, but trust me, that is plenty for the average size room. My enclosure is about 10 liters in volume with a minus 3 decibel point of approximately 47.5 Hz. Pushing beyond that will cause the driver to struggle with deep bass at its excursion limits. Regardless, for a 4 inch driver, this is not bad at all. I am using a 12mm or half inch MDF to construct the main enclosures, but the baffle is 18mm or 3 quarter inch birch plywood. I will have build plans available for these speakers on my website at soundlab.net, so go check it out now and many other build plans of previous builds I have done on this channel. You can find a link in the description box. This really is a very simple build, especially since it doesn't include any crossover or correction circuit components. The speakers are simply connected straight to the amplifier. I am planning to veneer my enclosures, so the build is just plain old butt joints, glued and nailed together with a brad nailer. Although even then you can still choose to paint your enclosure, just make sure to fill all the nail head holes and give it a good few layers of sanding sealer and primer to seal the MDF. Edges and corners are kept sharp, but feel free to cut a small bevel or router around over, especially on the baffle. This can eliminate some minor edge diffraction in the frequency response and will make it just that little bit smoother. Now the speakers can be wired up in two configurations, just normally as a left and right stereo pair with binding posts on the back, connected to a suitable amplifier or you can do what I have done so that I can use the speakers on my desktop and include a plate amplifier on the back of the speakers. This is the opening I am making here on the back panel of one of the enclosures. It is also important to apply some form of sound dampening material to the inside of the enclosure panels. 
For this I'm using a 12mm or half inch under carpet felt. This felt will reduce the resonances inside the enclosure and avoid standing waves forming inside that will influence the flatness of the frequency response. We don't want to over dampen the enclosure but just line the side, back, top and bottom panels. Later I will also insert some polyfill behind the driver into the enclosure to avoid back reflections onto the back of the speaker cone. The port is a slot port and this is cut with a flush trim router bit on the front of the baffle. I often get asked which is better, a slot port or a round port. The quick answer is that there is not a significant difference between the two. Both will essentially perform equally as long as the port opening area and the port volume remains the same regardless of the shape.
Before we continue, a few words about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills. Topics range from animation, graphic design, photography, illustration, and many, many more. I remember about 30 years ago, I got my first 35mm film SLR camera. Back then, I had a lot more time than I have now, and I tried to learn as much as possible about photography through books and magazines. It was just a hobby, but it was a great creative outlet. Today, with the advent of digital photography, the fundamentals have remained the same, but the technology has moved on quite a bit. Taking up a hobby such as photography has become much easier than ever before with the aid of online learning. So why don't you explore your creativity and make 2022 a year of new growth and connection? So consider to follow a class on Skillshare by Justin Bridges, Fundamentals of DSLR Photography. Justin covers everything you will need to get started, from understanding your DSLR, getting the ideal exposure, shutter speed, aperture, ISO, and editing your photos. He even has advice on buying cameras and lenses and lots more. So just as I did, you can invest in your personal growth and the discovery of new skills. The first thousand people to use my code SOUNDLAB or use the link in the description below will get one month free trial of Skillshare. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. For the plate amplifier, I am using a plate amp from Arilic. They make very good quality and sounding Bluetooth and Wi-Fi multi-room audio products. The Arilic two-channel plate amplifier is ideal for this situation and makes it really easy to implement a powered speaker setup. Go to the link in the description below to find out more about Arilic and their product offerings. In addition to the multi-room audio capabilities, Arilic also offers DSP or digital signal processing control of the amplifier via software called ACP Workbench. And I will be using this functionality to get a really flat response for my full range speaker by adjusting the response with the software's built-in parametric equalizer. However, with or without DSP and depending on your use case, these speakers sound very, very good indeed. I was pleasantly surprised and astonished at the quality of the sound from a full range driver of this small size without any correction circuit.
from the measured response we can see the peak around 13,000 Hertz however this flattens out if you listen to the speakers around 15 degrees off axis on your listening position in the horizontal plane vertical off axis response is looking good with nothing that creates concern so just have them pointed straight forward with no toe in but experimenting with positioning is always best to find the right sound for you Using the DSP function on the plate amplifier, I set a target curve that is the blue line in the current graph on the screen, with the green line being the corrected frequency response. We now have a response of plus minus 2 decibels across approximately 200 to 20,000 Hz frequency range. This next graph shows a comparison between the regional response and the corrected response. And then looking at the phase comparison, we see no drastic change or variation between the regional and the corrected phase responses. I will include in the build plan download a file that you can use to load to your Riddick plate amp via ACB Workbench if you want to mimic my response curve. Even though this speaker is not intended for very heavy bass tracks, during normal listening and through most genre of music the bass just sounds right. Uh, it's not very boomy or muddy but rather controlled and articulate. You can hear the difference in tone in bass notes coming from something like a double bass. The mid-range is ever so slightly forward sounding but very smooth and silky. It never gets out of control. Uh, high frequencies have a distinct airiness to it but again never feels out of control or fatiguing. Even though when looking at the frequency response we can clearly see that peak at roughly 13,000 Hz. But it does not seem to bother the overall listening experience. But let's listen to the speakers. Following is a sound demo, however this serves just to show you that the speakers do actually play and functions correctly, but ultimately you will only hear what these speakers sound like on your speakers, not what I'm hearing listening to them in, in real life. For now, take my opinion of these speakers as a guide if you would like to build these for yourself. You will be pleasantly surprised with the hi-fi quality performance and they make great desktop monitors too. The sound demo will illustrate comparisons between the non-filtered speakers and the DSP corrected speakers, but the differences are subtle. Thank you all for watching and I hope you enjoyed this project. Uh, please subscribe and like the video. You can also support me on Patreon and YouTube membership. And thanks to all of you that are already supporting me there. Until next time, adios. Free